Hi, after a recent couple of photo shoots with my kids, a lot of people asked me for my settings before and during the photo shoots as well as the post edits. I decided to make a video and go over the different parts. Okay, so I will be breaking down this video into three sections, before, during, and after the shoot. This task can be daunting in terms of props, background, location, lights, etc. But it is simpler than you think. For the two photo shoots that I'll show you today, I use the following items. A metal container that I purchased in the local store here in Switzerland for 9 bucks. A few fake flowers from Ikea that cost around 2 bucks 50 each. A couple of fake green plant bowls. A few oranges and lemons. A cup of milk. A kid apron. For the water photo shoot, we took a cup of milk and poured it into lukewarm water to give this creamy silky effect. As you can tell in the footage that I'm showing you, the lights are as dim as possible in the room where we're taking the photos, so that you can have better control over the lighting of the scene. I will have the gear that I used in the description below, but in short, I used a Fuji X-T3, a Fujinon 56mm f1.2, and 35mm f1.4, one flash, the Godox AD400 Pro with an Aperture Light Dome Mark II, and for color reproduction purposes, I used an x ray Color Checker Passport, for which I made a separate video that you can check in my channel. That is all the gear I used. I have done the editing in Lightroom Classic. Oh, by the way, to make things easier for you, I've created a couple of presets that you'll find down below. These are free, but if you want to make a little donation to keep up the channel and or to buy me a coffee, I will not say no. So what you want to do is have the flash at around one meter or so from your subject and at a 45 degree angle. If you use a bigger diffuser, such as the one that I have here, which is 90 centimeters in diameter with a thicker diffusion material, the one that I use takes off about one stop of light. You will have a softer bouncing light, making it more pleasing and avoiding harsh shadows and clipping your highlights which by the way means that there isn't any information in the white areas of the photo making those unusable. In terms of flash settings, I normally shoot TTL plus one when shooting indoor. That will add one stop of light and will compensate for the loss of light that the diffuser takes away. Again, make sure that you remove as much ambient light as possible. Now regarding the camera settings, let's break it down. I tend to shoot wide open with these two lenses, especially when getting closer to my subject, as I find them a tad soft on the edges when doing so. Also, you don't want too shallow a depth of field as you want to see some of the details in the image, as for example, in this specific uh, couple of shoots, you want to see the oranges floating in the water and the kitchen tools on the table. So keep your aperture anywhere between f1.8 and f3.2 for better results. The flash will compensate for the light loss. I keep the ISO at 250 usually, so I have as little noise as possible and I keep it close to the camera's native ISO. In terms of shutter speed, I shoot at 125th of a second usually, as there isn't that much movement happening, but you want to keep things looking as sharp as possible. One setting that I like to use is the preview exposure and white balancing manual mode. This allows you to keep a consistent image when taking the photos so you can see what's happening in between flashes. To turn this option on, you go in the setup menu, screen setup, preview, exposure, white balance in manual mode, and you turn it off. Uh, don't forget to turn this back on when you're not shooting with flash, it's better to have it on. If you have a color checker passport, you can use it to have more accurate white balance and colors later on. Not a must though, especially if you're using a preset like the one that I'm giving you. Doing this type of photo shoot requires to be at least two. One takes the shot and the other one holds the baby in place and move him around between the shots. One tool that I like to use is a reflector, a bouncing board, if you will, allowing me to open the shadows. But for these shots, I wanted to have a more contrasty type of look. 
so I didn't use one. You might need a third person to hold it though because it's kind of hard to hold it unless you have a tripod. And you know, for this type of shots, you move a lot, so it's not easy to, you know, hold the camera, hold the bouncing board, move the flash around, have the baby stay in place, so just, just think with that. So I then import my shots into Lightroom. I apply the right preset and tweak the different settings, which are mainly the color temperature, the tint, the highlights, shadows, clarity, etc. The basic ones. I can do a separate video for my post editing, but that should do for this video. I do want to say something that might be quite obvious for some, but that is very important and that is, if you're using a Mac, I normally keep my screen brightness halfway. That allows you to see the photos in a more accurate way and they look better in the final results and more like what you want them to look like. I hope you've learned a trick or two. If so, let me know in the comment section below. I would appreciate that. And if you have more questions, hit me up and I'll gladly answer them. Honestly, these two were fun shoots and I hope you'll have such a great experience as well. So take care, keep shooting and smiling and I see you like always in my next video. Cheers.